All right, everybody, you know that we cover a lot of tech here, a lot of gadgets, but I wanted to kind of give you all an insight of people who are actually using this to create an actual freaking movie, whether it's the iPhone, whether it's LED lights, whether whatever equipment it is. So I brought some friends into the show. We got director Nick Gregorio, editor extraordinaire Drew Marin, and cinematographer Blake Gaten in the house. They are part of the team that created Old Strangers. Danny, what's wrong? I don't remember like you do. You didn't see him out there. He's forgetting obvious stuff. Are you sure you're okay? I'm a lot better now. What are some of like the things that you guys actually did, whether it was iPhone or whatever devices you guys used? So just straight out of the gate, wrote it in Final Draft, did all the storyboarding in uh, Procreate, and then was able to share that with Blake and Drew. And then Blake and I would meet up and we would design all the lighting setups just right there on the on the iPad. We made a, a big list that had storyboards in it. We can draw a lighting diagram for each each setup, you know, where we thought cameras would be. We were also able to put in reference shots, the things that I came with Nick early on being like, hey, you know, does this kind of fit the vibe of, of the scene or what you're thinking? Are there a few examples where you could say like, oh, this was an iPhone shot, like straight up? Yeah, there's a few shots. Sorry, Blake, but we like me and Drewski had to go snag some. There's B-roll, there's stock footage there's b-roll that we shot there's stock footage that was purchased and then there was just some shots i snagged with my iphone there's a uh, sequence after the meet and greet when we kind of transition into the forest let you know that something's going on in the deep dark woods so we kind of threw everything we had all the tools that we had where you can control it with your phone or your ipad or you can look at camera settings you know lighting some of the uh night exteriors in the middle of the woods would be unheard of using just a few led units that are battery powered and you can string them up you know, in the woods to create fake moonlight, you know, and they were all RGBW capable. So we were able to light areas of the house that we wanted to, and we could dial just that right temperature of blue for the moonlight. He was using the iPad on set. One of the rigs that he made was like a fireplace rig and he would throw that effect on it. So anytime the fireplace wasn't on camera, Blake would just Ooh. dial that up and it gave like the dancing red, yellow, orange kind of effect on people's face. My man was like burying bulbs in the ground with wireless signals emitting light. Like that's just something you just couldn't, it was like our last setup and we were losing light. Sun was gone. Yeah, sun was <laughs> gone. And it was like, you know, it, we, we were able to get that because one of the issues wasn't like, dude, we need to run like 500 feet of cable to a generator to power this bulb, which is like boop, doop. And we were like, oh snap. Yeah, so Drew, you know, we, we come over to you and we talk about the editing process, I mean, you know, you had to ingest all this footage. So can you kind of walk through some of the process and, you know, how, 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 how you're like, do you really want me to? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> no, we can talk about this. First off, we shot Black Magic Raw. Not only did we shoot Black Magic Raw, we shot Alexa Raw. Very raw, yeah. It's like 12-bit uncompressed Raw 2.8K. The hmm. cards filled up pretty substantially. It would take a day to offload the car. Wow. And we were running, I think our... Longest day was 16 hours, Nick. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. We were like dumping cards as we were shooting, as we were dumping, just sweating. <laughs> the... <laughs> we shot it in a way that was almost like film, where once we got something, we knew we got it. We watched playback, we moved on. But that was the last time you saw it until what, a week later. You know wow. what I mean? Until we got home from production to like transcode it and look at it. I'd start in Adobe, hand it off to Nick for Da Vinci for color grading. You couldn't kind of do this before because the relinking would be terrible. But once we parodied the drives, if he sent me a Premiere project, I could just open it, save my iteration, send it back to him after I made my changes. And that's what we did for the whole editing process. Then we went into the sound mix. Then we went into sound design. I like using Final Cut 10 or Final Cut Pro, I guess they just call it now for sound design because it has the lanes and it doesn't have track. So for, for instance, certain hits, I'll layer like 15 sound effects. And when you're in Final Cut 10, you don't have to make 15 tracks. And then Drew would come in with a lot of the, the music and the ambiance and the kind of more designy elements he would do in Premiere. And Drew scored a lot of the picture. It was a lot of fun. We purchased big tracks from Trying. Shout out to them because we couldn't have made the movie the way it is without their elements. Every track had its own stems attached to it. So everything's custom, like pulling out hits and accenting things that you needed to, like really getting the score to jive with what you needed it to do and first time really diving in because i'm always used to like you know just swapping into track and seeing if it works if it doesn't but this 
<laughs> like really making our own pie and like just figuring it yeah. out and what worked and didn't work. Nick and I are our workflow in using the Apple ecosystem has been like just beneficial for us. Like there's a lot of times when we'd be working on scenes back and forth with each other and just literally throwing them in iMessage, like at a low compression rate and just, yeah. hey, does this work? It's like a real quick feedback, you know, right then and there. And that I grew fun. up. I, I forgot it about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Just know, text I, it. I text it straight away. Like it to work out all right. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, for, for the record, people watching, I didn't tell them to say that. You know, I mean, I cover <laughs> a lot of Apple stuff. Yeah. And we're, no, we're, yeah. all, we're all of us here on the ecosystem. But even, you know, I got to imagine, like, because the accessibility of these products now, it kind of, it really does push your creativity and kind of change your, the way your brain thinks about approaching these things because you can do things like, you know, five years ago is not that long ago. And you can now do things kind of even really like kind of create your own techniques. Me and my buddy, James, who was also working the film, he was an AC uh, operator, kind of all around handyman. And I was like, how do, how can we get like a handheld unit that you can essentially put anywhere, rig anywhere and have just a battery operated light that's low profile that'll give you enough light. We took like sockets that you would just rig a, like a house with, like a porcelain socket. We're able to screw in four bolts. We Velcro on the back. They have these little USB cables that go to the light. So we were able to use four power bricks, four sockets and four bulbs. And we had this light that we could kind of put wherever. Everyone that, was work that worked on this movie had something important to do. I do want to shout out Kate Matlock, who was our makeup artist, makeup effects artist. She did all of the beauty HMU as well as the creature gore effects. And Zane Gwinden, who was our sound engineer recorder. And I'm super proud to say that his audio recording was so good on set that we only ADR'd two lines in the whole movie. Wow. So everything you hear in the movie, Drewski and I were able to like mix, tweak, finesse, sweeten, and we only had to really truly ADR two, two lines that were kind of, and it wasn't even his fault. It was just nope. <laughs> the ruffly nope. jacket in the, in the yep. wood. Blake, you got to talk about some of the moving camera stuff you did. We had the Pocket Cinema 4K with a Sigma 18 to 35 art lens on it. And that was on the Ronin. And so I was able to screw the Ronin onto the monopod with the 3816th pin external monitor on the, the stem of the monopod. That way we were able to get a lot of height. You know, you can almost use it as like a jib or you can shorten it. And it just gives you a lot more mobility and control, almost like a steady cam would, where it's like a single post with a you know, uh, a gimbal on top. Our oneer that we did through the house, uh, James was pulling focus uh, via wireless video. He was like tucked away in the kitchen, you know, with the thing. I was next to him. We were next just... over him. We had, oh, we had the, um, we yeah, had the okay. AirPods in. The for AirPods. That. About that. <laughs> that was our Literally, walkie-talkie in the house. Yeah, it was like, it was like our walkie-talkies. We didn't, we didn't have yeah. any, you know, high-end surveillance. So we were like on the phone via AirPod, you know, and we were able to communicate with each other during the shot. Um, <laughs> that's a trip i forgot we use apple yeah, I, totally forgot about I know it sounds now. like we're like shilling for apple but honestly it's no. more like us being like they kind of helped us make this movie in a really efficient way like even on set drew was like ading and he would have the the like we shared like a document where we just killed scenes or and then scenes would get like circled or highlighted that like certain parts needed to be shot and he was like wearing it like a bulletproof vest and just pull the <laughs> iPad out and be like, and we would just sit and jam and look and be like, all right, we got this. We got to take care of this. When we used to do sketches together in the machinima days, I would draw storyboard, then like photocopy hundreds. And, like, yeah, right, right, and right, then right. I'd be like, all right, Blake, this is the thing. And I would go to Drew and like color things in and be like, this is, this should be this shot to this. And it was so clunky, not even a, a half a decade later. And we're like, zipping things over and texting things. And one of the best things about all the Apple products is that you have a consistent color space and look. When you're making a film that is so huge. So like if Drew texted me something or Blake shared a concept with me, I'm not looking at it and being like, ah, oh, this is too green mm. because my device isn't color matched to his device. So I think that's really important, especially since the final output was ProRes. Knowing that working through this whole process we knew what things should look like. We knew what the contrast point should be, the black point, the highlight point, and the kind of the color painting of each scene. We work with people before in the past to do like effects in other software on like a PC, and then you get it and you throw it in the timeline. And you're like, that doesn't match anything that would <laughs> And now it has to be color graded to all yeah. get out. And keeping it all in kind of like an Apple ecosystem is, is a big deal. Cause now with the movie being released and one of the primary platforms is iTunes, it looks absolutely stunning. It looks exactly yeah, like you would want it to look and kind of what it looked like through the whole process. Can you maybe go down a list of some of the maybe equipment or services that if you just off sure. the top of your head, all of you just kind of 
use to put this together? Blake provided a lot of equipment. He owns like uh, an Alexa Classic. And then we rented an Odyssey 7Q. So that allows you a monitor, but it also an external recording device. And that was kind of a jank Odyssey as well. I've, I've used better <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it thinks super old. And so Lens Rental is a service where you can just rent the equipment remotely. Unfortunately, it was like the height of the pandemic and all the stuff got delayed because of the snowstorm. And I had to like drive across Los Angeles the day before shooting to track it down. It was very stressful. Super early on, there was a site called Shot Deck. It's a subscription service that you can buy. You're able to access frames from some of your favorite movies. It's such a useful tool to kind of get all the minds kind of on a similar wavelength creatively. To be like, hey, what do you think about this look for this scene from this movie? A company, ArtGrid, just started, kept popping up. And I'm like, let me check out what they got. The licensing was so cheap. It was like 500 bucks for the year. I like mined the heck out of their site. I got like 48 videos all across the movie to just help round some scenes out. Dude, when I saw it, I was, I actually turned to, to my lady. I was like, I don't know if that's stock footage or drone footage, but it looks like it looks like exactly where they are. It's not yeah, like definitely. you find that on your first your first search. You got to go yeah. through hundreds, yes. maybe even thousands yeah. to find that one clip that might capture that essence. When you're shooting Alexa Raw, it has a certain look to it. And Blackmagic Raw is fairly similar. So a lot of stock stuff you're going to get is either compressed or colored. The iPhone stuff gets really jittery. It has some of the automatic stabilization that gets in there. Even with their cinematic mode, there's going to be color and stabilization and image cleanup and denoising that you're going to do to make it match a higher end camera. Nick, Nick, let people know where you actually shot this actually, because- Oh, right? Big Bear. Yeah, yeah, we shot this up in Big Bear. And how many days did you guys do shoots and then reshoots? Six and one. Wow. First official day was February 28th, 2021. So the movie actually came out less than a year from when we shot it. We shot for five days straight with our uh, our cast as our like principal photography. And then we lost 17 shots of the movie somehow. <laughs> well, how that happened? No idea. <laughs> so, we all, so thankfully, <laughs> these guys are like awesome. And the whole team is so awesome. And they we wow. went up like a week and a half later or two weeks later. And we shot those 17 lost shots and pick some other stuff. Well, did, did they involve cast members? So they had to get like makeup and everything done. It was a huge scene. It was like the most important scene. One of the most important scenes. Yeah. It was one of yeah, the most yeah, important yeah. scenes. It's a scene I'm in, which makes it even more. <laughs> right. Right. It's an indoor outdoor lighting setup, which I think, you know, I can't, I can't sing the praises of like Blake, James, Jason Solomon, our best boy, Jacoba Harrell, our key grip. These guys really lit the heck out of this movie. And I, I, I think for a lot of viewers and novices, they look at a scene and they're like, oh yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. Like, nah, there is so much equipment packed and hidden on the other side of camera. And what you're seeing is so curated and so lit and so framed up. And just to shoot from indoors to outdoors, I don't think people understand the difficulty of those types of things at night. Or our Warner that's like I, I, my favorite shot of the movie, Blake straight up does an iris pull on the lens as he walks through the door. So an iris pull is when you adjust your f-stop to let in more light. So if you're going from outside, which is really bright, to indoors, and like, you know, he's manhandling a steady cam rig on the ninth take, pulling iris while James is pulling focus remotely while I'm on the thing. Like, okay, that's good. All right. Like trying not to be a creep show <laughs> in his ear while our lead actress is has this big reveal and it's super intense moment and Drewski is outside like do we get it <laughs> <laughs> right right that shot too like we purposefully made that the last shot that we shot because of the how small the cabin was how much gear we had like throughout the movie it's like we got this angle okay let's move all the stuff and get the reverse <laughs> It like taken another good 30, 30 minutes to like get set up. It was uh, it was challenging, but it was super rewarding and fun. This was a pleasure. This was fun to catch up with you all. Old Strangers is available now on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Vudu, Vimeo, YouTube, Comcast On Demand, Verizon FiOS. If you want to buy a Blu-ray or a standard def Ooh. DVD, you can get one on Amazon. That's great. I'm going to do that. I'm a physical media guy. And we have a crazy giveaway coming up. Oh, hey. Giving away a two-night stay at the cabin that we shot in. Whoa. Uh, if, you, if you buy the movie and leave a review, you'll be entered in a, a drawing to win a two-night stay at the cabin. If you leave a four-star review. For yes. The <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes. 
Four or ten. Four or five, depending whatever whatever the ranking is, right? Yeah, <laughs> the highest stars available. Every star is an additional entry. There you go. All right, all right. None of that is true. <laughs> all right. Thanks, boys, so much. Um, thanks for all the insight and really appreciate the time. And uh, for everyone that's watching here, check it out, Old Strangers. I mean, I've seen it. I've actually, I guess I've seen it one and a half times because I've seen a little, you know, a little extra and I've seen it and it's great. And it was just awesome to kind of see it all come together. So till the next one, fellas, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Brian. All right. Later, thanks, boys. Brian. Appreciate it, bud.